turn the recording back on here. Um, um, I actually have a second document, which um, uh, I thought I had provided on the, um, on the course site, which was geared towards people at a little bit of an earlier stage of thinking. But I'm thinking um, uh, that perhaps uh, it would be um, it would be useful for for some people, and and uh, I'm going to have to check if it's on here. But I'm going to um, uh, sh show my screen to contrast it. Um, so the document uh, uh, about which I was I was just uh, speaking um, uh, was um, this uh, model conceptualization exercise two and. And really, this should be an formulation exercise too, because what what this framework here for agent-based model, the O-Parties framework, is really designed to start also you thinking about what are the constituent parts of an agent-based model that might um, uh, that might take you in the direction you want to go. Um, I do have a, a separate exercise, this model conceptualization exercise one, which I thought was one of the documents posted, but if it's not, I'll, I'll post it uh, post haste. Um, and here, what I'm asking for is um, uh, a set of, uh, a set of um, thinking about your model, matching it the hallmarks of, of, of systems, sort of aspects of what questions are motivating your model? What are the goals of the model? I tried to ask that. Uh, I did ask that in, in part one, um, and I was trying to elicit that uh, from students. And I know many of them actually did provide answers to this, this issue of what are the goals and the focus question. But another one here is what sort of evidence or understanding, and by evidence here, I'm including data. Um, um, you know, can you bring to bear uh, for the model? Um, are there certain types of cross-sectional data, longitudinal data, um, uh, you know, specific data points in the literature? And uh, so this was something that um, I had uh, sought to provide. And, and that would be a, a good thing for, um, for part two. I, I, uh, didn't emphasize this in part one. And um, I think that that could be valuable. Bearing in mind that um, when it comes to models, um, there's, of course, as you know, Maurice, more than most here, um, you know, a wide variety of relationships of models to data. And, um, and one of the types of models will be talked about today and no doubt next time is stylized models where often the the data side of it takes a back seat and often there's a paucity data or limited data um and you're just you're trying to use the modeling to think through um the implications of um certain types of interactions of factors um and those give rise to patterns, but we're not trying to match them directly to patterns in the world, and we're not bringing data to bear. But you're absolutely right that, um, and I spoke about this in the model conceptualization slides, when you do have data uh, at hand, often you're going to want to, to make use of that data effectively. You will want some points of interface with the model you're building. That could be outcomes or outputs from the model. So you want to compare model outcomes against this data because you want to help use it to challenge the model, to falsify the model or validate the model, or you want to use it to calibrate the model. Um, or you, you want to take some of this data and maybe use it to inform assumptions of the model. So it goes into parameters for the model. It goes into specific assumptions, or maybe it's to set the initial state of the model. Um, all of those are, you know, ways that it 
that data might come together with the model. And uh, I think uh, in that sense, thinking through this component, I was thinking that I wouldn't bring this for this deliverable because many, many had sought to address this as part of a deliverable one, but, um, and, and, and uh, you know, I was thinking endogenous, exogenous, ignored might be uh, part of, of uh, that, that first deliverable. But um, I do think probably this belongs in, in this one. So I think maybe I'll, I'll add it to that and, and update the, uh, uh, update the um, document accordingly. So yeah, thanks, thanks for that. And for those who haven't thought this through, endogenous, exogenous, ignored, this might be useful as well. Um, again, this this might be um, there. I think this this division is in one of the items I've shared. But if you haven't thought it through for your model, like what is it producing? Um, what is it generating? Endogenous things. What are you? What things are represented, but in a pre-specified way? Exogenous things and what things are ignored. That would be a really good thing to think through. So. Anyway, I hope that's uh, that's helpful.